Hi, my name is Dr. Andrea Furlan. I am a physiatrist and pain specialist in Toronto, Canada. If you have been diagnosed with hip or knee osteoarthritis, your doctor probably told you to go and do some exercises. Today, I'll show to you the exercise that I recommend to my patients with hip and knee OA or osteoarthritis. The type of exercises for OA are lubrication, aerobics, weight bearing, and stretching, which can be remembered as LAWS. I'll show to you 20 LAWS exercises today, so let's go. First, it's important that you understand why the LAWS exercises are important. When people understand why they are doing the exercises, they adhere to the exercises and feel motivated to keep doing them regularly. Lubrication is important because the joint produces a liquid called synovial fluid. This fluid is produced when we move the joint or we put weight on it. The synovial fluid provides nutrition to the cartilage. The cartilage is a thin layer that covers the bones to form a slippery surface. So the bones will absorb the shock and will move smoothly by reducing friction. Lubrication is important, especially in the morning. Many of my patients have morning stiffness. This is because at night they don't move the joints and then there is not a lot of production of synovial fluid. So the fluid tends to thicken. This is what causes stiff and creaky joints. Look at this crystallized honey. Imagine that the synovial fluid is like this. If we warm it a little bit and mix with a spoon, the honey will become liquid and smooth again. Also, the more we move the joint and put weight on it, it's like producing more honey. So remember, motion is lotion. So, I recommend you to do the lubrication exercises in the morning before you get out of bed. This will help to warm up the joint to improve the range of motion, to break down any thickness of the synovial fluid. The other exercise, aerobics, weight bearing and stretching, you can do during the day. Aerobic exercises are important to maintain a good cardiovascular system. Aerobic exercises are any type of exercise that increase the heart rate and respiratory rate. This may include walking briskly, dancing, biking, swimming. Make sure you talk to your doctor to ensure that you don't have any restriction for this activity, like aerobic exercises. Weight-bearing exercises are extremely important for people with OA. The main advantages of weight-bearing exercises is that they reduce pain in the joint and they also help to maintain the calcium in the bones, especially important for people who also have osteoporosis. It is very common that people will have these two conditions, OA and OP, osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. You may want to watch another video that I made about osteoporosis. The S in LAWS is stretching. Stretching is important to maintain flexibility, to maintain a good range of motion in the joints that have osteoarthritis. When people have joint pain, they tend to protect the joints and use it less and less then the muscles get shortened and stiff. The tendons, the ligaments, and the joint capsule will all get very tight. So it is important to do gentle stretching of the structures around the joints. At the end of this video, I will explain some movements that should not be done if you had a recent hip replacement or arthroplasty, because some exercises will put the hip at risk of dislocation. So let's get started. I'll show you 20 exercises today that are good for hip and knee osteoarthritis. Before you do these exercises, you may want to apply some heat, like a, a bag of beans that you can warm up in the microwave. You can put this two minutes in the microwave and then you leave here for about uh, two minutes to warm up the joint before you do these exercises. You can put in the knee or you can use a hot water bag like this. You fill with hot water and you also can leave about two minutes in the joint to warm up the liquid before you do these exercises in the morning. Uh, I prefer the water because it molds better to the joint, but if you don't have those things, don't worry, you can still do these exercises. 
So the exercise number one is for the knee. It's flexion and extension for the knee. So you will be doing extension and flexion. That's the only movement that the knees can make, extension and flexion. So we'll be doing this bend both knees and do one at a time. So you'll be doing eight repetitions for each knee. If this is too easy, you can do 12, 15 or 20 repetitions. Do for the other knee. And this is good that you're doing the bed because you are doing against gravity, which also helps to strengthen the quadriceps. And if you straight all the way up and straight your knee, you also be stretching the hamstrings and gastrocnemius muscles here in the back of your leg and thigh. So this is at the same time some stretch, strengthening, but it's most importantly lubrication exercise for the knee. So do this, that's the exercise number one. The exercise number two is lubrication for the hips. We're going to draw numbers in the air. So bend the left leg and you're going to draw number one in the air and draw a very big number two, number three. This is movement for the hips. Number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, and that's it for the right leg. Now bend the right and do the numbers with the left leg. Number one, number two, very big. The bigger you do, the better. Number three, number four, you are lubricating the hips. Number five, number six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so that's lubrication for the hips. Now, the exercise number three is a movement that the hips do is external rotation, internal rotation. So we'll be doing external rotation, internal rotation. External rotation, internal rotation for the hips. Do this eight times or 12 or 15 or 20. The more you do, the better. So you're moving your hips in and out this helps to expand the capsule. It helps to warm up the liquid inside of the hip joints. And the more liquid you produce with the hip joints, the more nutrition to the cartilage. So this is great for your hips. So the next exercise is hip abduction. It's for the hips to move open, up and down. So it's important that you keep your toes pointing forward and pointing down. So you can do this eight times for each hip. I'm doing this for the left one. And when you do this eight times, you're going to do now the lower leg. We're going to work on the inner thigh muscles here. This is called adduction for the right leg. We're going to put this leg on the front one and we're going to move up this one eight times. This is adduction. Keep your knee straight. Keep the ankle in, in straight like that. And move the lower leg. You're going to do this. And this is hip adduction for the left, for the right one. So if this exercise is too difficult for you, you can do a modified version, which is the clamshell. Just keeping your body straight, but now you're opening and closing like this. It has about the same effect. You're strengthening these muscles. You are lubricating the hip by moving. Just try not to go backwards. Just stay upright like this and open and close your hips. This is the clamshell. So now this exercise is extension of the hips. 
you're going to be on your stomach and raise the left leg eight times. And you're going to do for the right leg eight times. And you can do 12, 15, 20. And then the last exercise that you do before you get up is the same thing that we did for the other side, but now we are going to do a abduction for the right leg. Keep the knees straight, the toes pointing forward and pointing down. And you do this eight times for the right leg. You can do 12, 15, or 20 if you want. And the other one is adduction for the left leg. Do this eight times. You should not be doing adduction exercises if you just had recently a hip replacement or joint or troplasty in your hip. So this exercise is not indicated because it can dislocate the hip if you had a hip surgery in the last uh, three or six months. You should talk to the surgeon of what kind of exercise you can do. So those are the exercises that you should be doing in the morning to warm up your joints, hips and knees, to reduce the stiffness before you get up in the morning. The next exercises are weight-bearing exercises. You may want to do them during your day. Try to incorporate them as routine when you are cooking or watching TV. For these exercises, you will need some equipment. You need the following. You need a wall that you can slide on, stairs or steps, a mat, a sturdy chair, like this one here, without wheels, so it doesn't slide on, and ankle weights, like these ones. This, they have 1.1 kilogram, and you can attach them around your ankles to increase the weight. So this exercise is squatting on the wall. So we are going to squat against this wall, you can keep your feet apart and approximately one foot distant from the wall. Now touch the wall with your head, your shoulders and your hips and then you're going to start going down, 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 down. Stay there for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Then come up. And you can do this a couple of repetitions and you can also increase the time that you stay in that position. You can increase to 10 seconds, 20 and 30 seconds. The more you stay in that position and the more you can repeat this exercise, the better. So you can do this many times during the day. Anytime you find a wall in your house or a door, you can do this exercise and stay there. That's excellent to strengthen the muscles around your hip. And this is weight bearing because we are putting the weight of your body on the joints of the hips and knees. So for these exercises, if you have ankle weights, you can attach them to your ankles to increase the weights. So then you will be doing these exercises more efficiently. These weights, they have 1.1 kilograms. So for this exercise we are going to do abduction of the hips with weight bearing when you are standing up. You need a chair that is a sturdy chair that doesn't have wheels so you're not going to sleep or it could be the countertop so something for you to hold on. Your body straight, your knees straight, the toes pointing forward and then you're going to do opening and closing. Knees straight, toes pointing forward. Do this eight repetitions with the left leg. If this is easy, you can do 12 or 15 or 20 repetitions. So after you do this, then you repeat with the other leg 
just do the same thing body upright don't bend like this or this just stay upright holding on something here and just open knees straight and toes pointing forward so for this next exercise you also need a chair here we are going for the hip extensors the gluteus maximus muscles let's start with the left leg you just go like this keep your body straight the knee straight and just move your hip backwards eight repetitions and when eight becomes easy you can increase to 12 15 and 20 repetitions and then do with the other leg it's important that you keep your trunk upright and your knee straight you're doing this for the hip so feel the hips moving feel the hips the tension in the capsule you're distending the capsule you're moving the hips in this position so for these exercises we're going to do for the knee exercises we're going to do weight bearing for the knees we're going to do knee flexion extension so again hold to the chair and with the upright trunk just bend the knee backwards and try to touch the knee as farther than you can and at the end if you can even do some stretch here that would be good because they will be stretching the quadriceps these muscles here at the front but if not just try to go up as far as you can do this eight repetitions and when this becomes easy you increase to 12 15 20 repeat with the other leg you're doing this for the knee you are flexing and extending the knee extend completely flex completely and if possible pull a little bit here to stretch the muscles so this is movement for the knees do eight repetitions or 12 or 15 or 20 repetitions so you can do this in a countertop in your home anything that you have or a sturdy chair like this so for this exercise now we are going to do sit and stand so get the chair that we were doing the exercise before and you are going to do a stand and sitting try to sit at the edge of the chair and if you can just touch the chair and stand completely touch the chair and stand touch the chair and stand this is exercise for the quadriceps for the hamstrings and when you go down when you are sitting try to do very slowly because then you are strengthening the hamstrings here and then if this is too hard for you you can do a complete seat and then go up a complete seat and then go up so this exercise is for the knees the muscles that we have inside of the knees here are called vastus medialis obliquus the quadriceps have four heads the vastus medialis is the head more medially internally here in people who have osteoarthritis of the knees this part of the quadriceps is usually weak so we have to strengthen this and how do we do this so with the ankle weights that we just put on our, our ankle we're going to do straightening of the knee and then you just do flexion of the knee flexion extension at this position here so you can come close to the back of the chair just straighten your knee and just lower about 30 degrees lower and up down up and do this many repetitions with ankle weights so you are strengthening the vastus medialis obliquus here this muscle which is very important to stabilize the knee and then do for the other leg here 30 degrees so do eight repetitions when eight is too easy increase to 12 15 and 20 repetitions so this exercise we're going to do in the stairs if you don't have stairs you can use the steps 
Make sure that you have railings, so then you don't lose your balance. We are going to do right foot up, right foot down. Right foot up, right foot down. We're going to do this for one minute, or you can do this 20 times. Just keep doing this. Keep your body straight. And after you do this 20 times for the right leg, you're going to do this for the left leg. So now we're going to do for the left, left up, left down, left up, left down. So you're doing this weight bearing exercises for your hips, for your knees, you're strengthening the muscles, you're moving the joints. left down left up left down and this exercise is on your side you go up and down on your side so left up right down just keep doing this and you do for one side it's important to do this for the lateral muscles the ones on the sides of your hips. Once you do this for one side, you can do this for the other side. Do the same thing. And you feel the muscles here on the sides of your hips moving and your hips moving. So this is important. You can do this 20 times for each side. So now we are going to do the stretching exercises and we are going to use a mat, but you can do this on your carpet or on the floor at home or even in your bed. These stretching exercises I recommend you to do before you go to bed to sleep at night because if you do this, then your joints will be less stiff in the morning when you wake up. So this next exercise will be pelvic tilt and bridges. Pelvic tilt, to do this exercise, the knees are bent, the feet are flat on the, on the floor, and then you're going to move the pelvis in, tuck the stomach in, touch all the vertebrae here, the lumbar spine touching the floor, and relax. So you do this, so you do this movement with the pelvis, down and up, down, and do this 8, 12, 15, or 20 repetitions. You feel the muscles stretching here in your lower back, you feel your stomach coming, tucking in, contracting. This is the pelvic tilt. And then in the same position, you're going to do the bridge. Bridge, you just raise the pelvis, keeping the shoulder, hips, and knees like a straight line. And you stay there in their position. Ideally, you keep this for one minute, but you start with 10 seconds, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 seconds increasing gradually the more you stay there the better when you're doing this exercise tighten your glutes tighten your abdominal muscles relax and don't forget to breathe normally and come down so now we are going to do stretching for the gluteus muscles and what we're going to do is we're going to pull the hips here. I usually don't recommend doing this because you put too much uh, strain in the knee, so you can pull like this. So let's start with the left hip. Pull the, this knee towards the left shoulder. So you do this, pull, and you're stretching all of these muscles here. And then you're going to pull this towards the opposite shoulder, so pull the left knee towards the right shoulder you're stretching and you can put some 
force here, so then you're forcing the knee to stretch, you feel stretching here. And once you do for the left leg, you're going to do for the right side. So again, pulling this to the same side. So the right knee, you're pulling towards the right shoulder. And now you're going to pull towards the opposite shoulder. So you feel stretching here, the gluteus, the piriformis muscles. So this is a good stretch. And you can do this, repeat for this, the other side, and to this side. And repeat for this leg here, and this one. So now we're going to stretch specifically the piriformis muscle. So this leg straight, and this knee on the top of the other one, and we're going to pull the knee to this side. And you're feeling stretching the piriformis is this muscle here. And now you do for the other side. This one straight, and this one here. And you pull, and you feel stretching. The piriformis is a tiny muscle here, but it's very important and sometimes it's tight and can cause pain that goes down your leg. So you repeat this many times for each side. So the next group of muscles that we're going to stretch is the adductor muscles. These are the muscles that are in the inner thigh here. So you're going to sit and sit upright, put your feet together, plant to plant, flat, and then just relax your knees Try to go down, 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 relax. When you breathe out, you relax more. And when you breathe out and relax, you can stretch, put a little bit of force here to force them to go down. If you can't do this, if your knees are here, that's fine, stay here. And, but if you can, relax and go down like this. And you can do some movements like butterfly. It helps to relax the adductor muscles and stretch them. So these next muscles that we are going to stretch are the hamstrings, the muscles that are behind or thigh, and they also, they bend the knee and they also move the hip. So to stretch the hamstring muscles, there are many different techniques. I'm going to show you one that I do on the floor. So for me, it's easier if I bend one leg and now I'm going to stretch the right leg. So what I do is keep the big toe pointing towards your nose and you are going to try to touch your big toe. So the lower you go, the better. You see that I'm very tight because I spent the whole day sitting. So the more you are sitting during the day, the tighter are these muscles and the more you need to stretch. So then you touch the toe of that leg and try to lower your head, if possible, touching your head to the knee. I can't do that, but that's because I need to stretch more. And you can do this. Relax and breathe. Come back slowly. Now do for the other leg. Here. And come back. So you feel when you do this, you feel all these muscles here stretching. So now we are going to do a stretching for the quadriceps muscles. For this one, you are lying down on the mat on your stomach and you're going to bend the knee here and then pull with your hands and try to bring the heel touching your butt area. So if you do this, you feel stretching at the front of your thigh. And then you can relax your head and pull, pull, pull. And let go. And pull here. Let go. And do this for the other side.
let go and pull and you feel all the muscles in front of your thigh stretching stretching I prepared a document with a summary of all these 20 exercises. Go to the description of this video below and you will find the link to the document to download. If you had a recent hip replacement, your doctor may have told you to take some hip precautions. These are certain movements that may cause the new hip to displace or dislocate. These movements are the following. Crossing the legs, Bending your hips above 90 degrees, so this is 90 degrees, so not bending more than this. And also twisting around the hips, so doing these movements or twisting. Please remember that this video is for educational purposes only. If you have been diagnosed with osteoarthritis of the hip or knee, please ask your doctor or physiotherapist if these exercises are appropriate for you. If you like this video, don't forget to like it to subscribe to this channel and to turn on the notifications. I also tweet, I have a Facebook page and an Instagram account. You may contact me there and ask questions, make a suggestion or comment. Thank you for watching. Bye.